Hey, Jordan Bench here, jordanbench.com. In this video, I just want to encourage you by sharing my Christian testimony and how I got to where I'm at now. So my, just to let you know, my mission is to train and equip believers to help them walk as Jesus walked, to do the works of Jesus, and to go out and advance the kingdom of God. So just to let you know of how I got to where I'm at, back in 2009, I wasn't living the way I was supposed to be living. I was living reckless. I was living a life of sin. I was drinking. I was doing drugs. I was uh, looking at women the wrong way. I had a wrong, wrong mindset towards people. I was just living in a really bad place. And I can remember it was September 11th, 2009. I was driving on the highway. I wasn't wearing a seatbelt. And I was going like 80 miles an hour. And I was coming up over this hill and I couldn't see on the other side of it. And as I come up over this hill, there's a car at a dead stop right in front of me. And right before I made impact, something happened. I said I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. So I felt a hand literally come on my shoulder, push me over into the passenger seat. So my head, my body was in the passenger seat, but my, uh, my, my legs, my torso was in the driver's seat. But I felt that hand push me over, and then I felt, I felt the hand hold me down in my seat, pressing me down like a force. I could feel it pressing me into the seat. So I remember moments right before I made impact that this happened, and that the airbags went off. And when the airbags went off, I just remember thinking, what is happening right now? But the airbags, they didn't hit me. It was, it was like there's a force field around me, and these airbags that went off, they did not touch me. It was... It's just, it's, it's amazing is all I can say. So the car that I hit, she went flying across the other side of, of the road. Like she went way across the road, went into the grass, almost into the other lane of traffic. Me, I just spun and spun out of control. And I just remember sitting there in the car. I could hear the horn. I could, you know, the engine noise, all that stuff. And I just remember thinking, what if a semi is coming down the road and is just going to plaster into me? Because I can remember, I, I think I watched that movie Final Destination and that happens in it. So I was like panicked, terrified. I didn't know what was going on and I was just so dazed and confused. But the crazy thing is, is I didn't have one scratch in my body. I should have been ejected. I should have went through the windshield. I should have died on impact. I remember being in the ambulance and I was uh, talking with the EMTs and the EMTs were just so baffled about what had happened. They said, do you not understand what just occurred here? Like, people don't don't survive these things. People don't live from this stuff. And if you would see pictures of my car, you, you'd understand my car is just completely like smashed in the front. And both cars are totaled. So it was just a, a crazy thing that occurred. So it was the, the following Sunday, my, my aunt asked me to go to church with her. And I, I agreed, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll go to church with you. So I went to church because, I, like I said, I just had this experience and I was trying to rationalize what had just occurred. So I go to church and then the pastor, he starts talking about angels and their divine protection. And then he even uses an example of getting in a car wreck going down the highway. And I just remember sitting in the seat thinking, what is happening? Like, what is going on? So a little bit after this, I ended up giving my life to Jesus. I got saved, gave my life to him surrendered everything and decided to follow after him. And I was thinking that things would, you know, be good, like everything would be fixed and everything, but it wasn't. I mean, I was still living a life of sin. I still had a lot of sin issues. I still had a lot of struggles and I really wasn't sure what was going on or how to overcome these things. I wasn't sure what to do. And I remembered, I can remember thinking like in that moment, I needed to just seek after God fully and just fully go after him. Because at that time, I can remember I would go to church and going to church, I'd be drunk <laughs> or not. I'm sorry, not drunk. I'd be hungover. I'd be hungover going to church and because of the night before. So I just had so much issues going on in my life at that time. And one thing I can remember thinking is going to church on Sunday and just that's it. It, it wasn't enough for me. I needed more. So at that time, I was actually working as a welder and as a welder, the job that I did, it was so monotonous every day. I just did the same monotonous thing every day. So we were allowed putting headphones in and I would typically listen to like rock and roll or rap or whatever. And at that time, I remember thinking, you know what? I need to start learning about God, the Bible, you know, just start learning about this stuff. So I started listening to podcasts. I started listening to YouTube videos 
And I think the one thing that really helped me out was I actually got a hold of the audio Bible. And I listened to the audio Bible, no joke, I listened to the whole thing, the whole Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, listened to the whole thing in five weeks. And my job, I remember I would work, you know, sometimes 10 hours, sometimes 12 hour days. So we're talking start to finish just in a day's time, just engrossing myself in this. So I just completely dedicated myself to just listening to the Bible, to uh, listening to preachers and just asking questions and then looking up videos on how to, you know, what those, what those answers were. So I just went through, just, I looked at it like God was taking me through like a training. He was preparing me. He was training me. And honestly, I spent several years, years doing this, maybe five years of this was kind of like my routine. This is what I did. And one thing, one thing that I decided to do was join the prayer team at our church. So I went to like a mega church in our, in our town. And I just remember thinking like, okay, I've, I've learned a lot of this stuff, so I need to start applying it. So I joined the prayer team at our church. And what I would do is um, I'd pray for people who would come up to the altar. I'd help them. Uh, I'd lead them through salvation or rededication, or if they had problems in their life, I'd talk to them and I'd pray for whatever problems that they had. But this was a huge step for me to join this uh, this prayer team. It was a huge step for me because it was way out of my comfort zone. I wasn't used to you know talking to people with ministry and that kind of stuff. And I can remember sitting in my seat, being terrified, being petrified, knowing that I have to go up at the very front of the church at this mega church and communicate with people, pray for them. And they're, they're bringing all their problems up here. And I'm the one who has to like mediate and say, listen, God's for you and he's not against you. And, you know, let's, let's just pray over this stuff. So I remember sitting in my seat, my palms would be sweaty. I'd, I'd get so nervous. I feel like I have to go run to the bathroom. It would just drive me crazy just sitting there and thinking, um, God, I, I can't, I can't operate like this. Like this fear can't be in me. So one thing I started doing was I just dove into the Bible more and started researching more and praying more and praying more and pressing into him more. And I think just being a part of that and doing it more and more, uh, as far as being on the prayer team, I think it began to build confidence in me. And because I began doing it so much, so much so that where I would actually pray with groups of people, I'd pray one-on-one -on -one or you name it. Like I was able to pray in all these different situations and talk with people and help lead them and guide them through these different situations. So sometime after this, something amazing happened. I came in contact with a man. His name is Russ Desdar. If you don't know who he is, just look him up on YouTube or, or online and you'll find a whole lot about him. But Russ is an amazing man of God. He is someone who has been in the, the deliverance ministry for 35 plus years now. Um, he's just such a great man of God. I came in contact with him. And when I came in contact with him, he actually asked me to join him on one of his trips. And that led to me joining his team, his SIIU team. So I've been with Russ now for years. And in that, I have learned so much just working with him and going out on these trips and ministry and everything else. It has been such a game changer for me in my life. It's, it's been amazing. And right now, like where I'm at currently, I really feel like God has me in such a good place. I, I'm very confident in, in who I am in Christ and what I'm able to do and just to give you an example, like I'm able to speak at, speak at church. I'm able to lead people in prayers. I'm able to go out, witness to people. I'm able to pray for people. Whatever the situation is, I feel pretty prepared for things. So I just want to, like my heart right now, my heart is to help train and equip you. My heart is to just help you in the areas of God, help, help grow you up into Christ, help show you who you're meant to be and, and what you're capable of doing in Him, right? So listen, if you have any questions for me, if you need me to pray for anything, whatever it may be, just go ahead and leave a comment below and I will do my best to get to you and pray for you or whatever you have, whatever questions you have. So I will talk to you later.